What's going on guys? Welcome back to another one. So today as you can tell from the title of the video, we're going to be doing brakes. And seeing as I'm going to be doing the brakes, I'm going to make it worth it and swap out my rotors. I definitely don't need to change my rotors, but you know what? Why not? Um, and I also wanted uh, something more cosmetically appealing, if that's a word. Uh, so I went with some cross drilled and slotted and actually this whole thing is a kit from PowerStop. Now you can choose whatever brand you want and whatever type of rotor uh, or, or brake pads that you want. It all depends on whatever application you're going after. If you're going to be tracking your car, I recommend something a little higher um, and looking into your options. But the process to get all this swapped out is still the same regardless of whatever products you choose. And I'll have this linked below. Uh, so if you're interested in this kit, what I like about it, it comes with everything. Front brakes, rear brake pads, uh, both ceramic. And then we have front rotors and the rear rotors and cross drilled and slotted. I already opened them up just to take a look, but here I'll show it to you. Nothing special. And what's cool, everything is labeled. So you know exactly which goes on which side. Um, but I'm also going to be doing a little bit of tweaking to this. So I'm not a fan of the uh, raw steel look. Um, that and I know for a fact this is going to rust. Uh, second water hits it and the ear. So my plan is to basically paint it. And it's extremely simple to do so. All you need is some caliper paint. And I'm just going with regular black. And of course some brake cleaner. That's literally all you need to throw some color onto these things. Um, and I'll show you that process. It's really simple and it's up to you if you want to do that part or not. I want to do it because it looks better in my opinion. But yeah, so that's the front rotors and here's the rear. Again, same thing. We're just going to be coloring the hat, the top hat of the rotor. And yeah, that's it. If you're painting these, I don't recommend you Put a bunch of paint in here, especially this is where the shoe or the uh, e-brake makes contact. So I'm not going to really do anything there. It's mostly going to be on the outside for, that I'm going to be painting. But yeah, quick, simple process. Nothing too hard. Level of difficulty for this job, I'd say out of 10, 3 to 4. Um, not hard at all. And it's just simple tools to get it swapped out. So let's open this up and see. It looks like it comes with the pads as well as shims. Uh, there we go. And that's exactly what it comes with. So we got some brake shims, uh, some lubricant for the brake pads, and the actual pads themselves. Yep, regular ceramic pads. Cool. And what is this? Oh, these look like the boots and the calipers. Don't really need to change those, but if they're worn, good to know. It comes with, I'll hold on to these. All right, so let's get started. I'm gonna prep these by first spraying it down with the brake cleaner, because anytime you get new rotors, they typically put this anti-rust oil and sometimes there's adhesive depending on the type of packaging that it has. So you wanna clean that good and prep it before you spray paint it. So let's get started on that first. All right, so just like that, we got every, all of our rotors cleaned off with some brake cleaner. And then I taped it up where I don't want paint to go. I'm just gonna be painting the top hats on the rears. Same for the front and maybe here for the fronts as well. Reason being, I know for a fact when water gets here, it's gonna start looking like rust and up here. Boys, there we have it, finished product. Paint came out great. Two and a half i think coats i did or just two coats it's actually the next day i let them sit overnight so it would dry properly but honestly it depends on the weather around you um probably half hour 45 minutes should be more than enough time for it to dry but came out pretty good not worried if there's a little bit of overspray on this portion because once the brake pad hits it it'll clean it up anyway came out excellent very happy all right let's get started with throwing these in the car this is going to be pretty simple First, we gotta start by taking our brakes off, which is gonna be these two bolts, if this thing focuses. All right, it does wanna focus, there we go. One bolt here, one bolt here, and that'll take the caliper off, and then the bracket itself 
is one bolt here and the other bolt is right there hopefully the camera's picking it up and that's it that's all it takes to really take this off so let me pop that off and we'll go from there now while I have the car in the air I want to just service this a bit clean this up and take some measurements make sure nothing's changed uh, or shifted over the last actually I don't think I've touched this in over a year so definitely want to just clean it up and make sure everything's still even on both sides so more importantly let's get this rotor off and be prepared to bust your knuckles <laughs> alright so before I pull this out I just like to stick a screwdriver in here and just pry it to open to compress the caliper and the piston right, here we have it you're gonna want to get something to hang this normally I hang it off the suspension or if you could get a little bucket in there even better so this way it's not putting uh, strain on the line we'll leave this up here for now All right, so with our pads out the way, now we can take off the bracket. Calipers off, caliper brackets off. Now to get this off, sometimes you get lucky and this will just come out. That doesn't seem to be my case, so I'm just going to spray here with some PB blaster. You can start whacking at it, or if you notice, there's some screws, uh, holes here, threaded, that you can put a screw in and it should help pop the rotor out. But let's see which one works. Alright, my case, uh, 14 millimeter bolt. Pop that in and turn and see if this works. Yep, it's working. There you go. Makes life so much simpler. There we have it. Our old rotor's out. All right, so with the old rotor off, what I like to do is put some anti-seize on here to avoid the shit binding ever again if I need to, for whatever reason, remove it. So, get some on here. You can also put some inside the back of the rotor as well. There we go. Here's our new rotor. All right, that's perfect. Now let's put the bracket back on and we'll swap out the brakes and this side will be complete. All right, so at this point, caliper's on. We've got the caliper bracket back on. Um, here's where you want to take a look at your shims. Now my kit, my brakes came with brand new shims, but honestly mine is in good shape. It's not warped or rusted or anything really, so I'm just going to keep mine on. But if you wanted to, you could swap them onto the new ones. Also, you're going to get your new brake pads. And it comes with grease. Now it's very important you put the grease here. Nowhere else but here. Um, just so you, there's no noises or anything. It's for noise reduction mostly. Um, and we'll need to get our old caliper, well, our caliper. We'll have to compress these uh, pistons in. And the way I typically do it, I'll grab the old brake pad, stick it in here, then use the C-clamp to pull it in. Uh, but before you, you compress those in, you want to go up top and crack that open so if there is air 
when you're compressing you don't want any air buildup or you'll need to bleed your brakes some of you probably will need to bleed your brakes depending on how bad they were mines are pretty good so I leave that cracked open so air when I compress this can get out so like I said use the old pad then I got a C clamp and then I just wind this in to compress it pretty simple and straightforward let me do that and we'll throw the caliper right back on all right so now we got our pads in we put our little lubricant on now we just slide over the new well we slide over the caliper right over it and put it into place Put these two in. All right, so calipers on, brackets on. Let's tighten everything down. This side's complete, everything's tightened up and torqued down. Uh, it's pretty simple. Like I said, 219's holding the caliper bracket, 214's holding the actual caliper on, and that's it. Pop it off, pop in the new one. Now, let's go to the next side. I'm gonna go to the next side, do the same thing, and then we'll jump straight to the back. See you in a bit. All right, guys, so we got the front on. Now for the rear, it's pretty much the same thing. It's your two caliper bolts, and then the bra caliper bracket bolts are right here. One up top, and one down here. Right over here. I don't know if the camera's gonna see it, but right there. Uh, the only difference is these are still 14 up here. These are still 14, but the caliper bolt instead is a 17. So same process. We're going to take the caliper off first, then the bracket. I mean, you could do them both at the same time, but it's, to me, it's a little more of a pain in the ass. Um, and especially if you're just changing your brakes, you only want to take one and two off to pop this off and put the new pads in and slap this back in. And make sure your parking brake is not on because if it's on, the shoe on the inside is locking this in place. Okay, then we get our same bolt we were using for the front. There's two holes right here. You just, there's actually a 13 uh, bolt. Pop that in and it makes life so much easier to get these things off. already see the rotor moving moving off there we go and it's free and if you put any in the rotor do not put on the top of the drum because that's where your brakes are gonna be grasping if you're gonna put some in the inside only in the face that's it we're good, we can pop this right back on. And it should slide right in, nice and easy. Now on the old rotor, there's this little uh, plastic that we, we're gonna have to pop off and put it onto the new one. So it's easy, just pop it off on the back then we put it right here nice and simple perfect now we can start reassembling the caliper bracket and the caliper and 
Make sure the curve goes along with the curve of the rotor. Alright, so that's it. Everything's tightened down. We got the rear set up. It looks pretty damn good if you ask me. Let me jump on the other side and then we'll put the wheels on, lower the car down, and we'll take a look. Alright boys, and just like that, it's over. Both sides are on, everything's torqued, wheels torqued, brakes torqued, everything's torqued. And this is what it looks like. Came out absolutely amazing. Very happy with the finish of everything. Let's take a look at the rear. Oh yeah. Nice and clean. The cross drilled and the slot gives it that slight little uh, cosmetic appeal. Makes it look good. Alright, now once everything's on, you want to make sure you cap back your brake fluid and pump the brakes before you move this car. Make sure you build up pressure. I already did that, so everything's working great. But yep, that'll do it for today. Nice, quick, simple install. And the end result, amazing. And while I had everything in the air, I was serviced the suspension. Everything was in good shape, so no complaints there. But that'll do it for today. Thanks for tuning in, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.